Okay, let's jump into the second topic, uh, which is the transformation between the phasor and the sinusoidal signal itself. And then right now we know the phasor will give us a benefit, at least allow us to avoid uh, solving simultaneous uh, differential equations. And then, then because the signal is in time domain and we may want a solution in time domain and you first need to go to the phasor and then dealing with the algebraic equations in phasor and then come come back uh, to the time domain so the transformation between the phasor and the uh, sinusoidal signal is, is is a must and um, there uh, so let's first look at the sinusoidal uh, to phasor uh, transformation and this one almost based on definition so we know the magnitude and phase angle but there is a catch here so first we need to make sure we need to make sure uh, the sinusoidal signal is in cosine form is in cosine form If not, we need to use the trigger identity cosine x minus 9 degrees equal sine x to convert that to cosine function. So then we take the phase angle. Let's look at a few examples. Uh, the first one here, um, v is equal, in this one already, uh, this is in the cosine form, so we don't need to do anything. We just need to take the amplitude, which is 120 and take the phase angle 60 degrees and then we get uh, this phasor immediately right there is another form to denote this phasor in polar form is you put the magnitude first and then put an angle sign here and and write a 60 degrees uh, follow that and this is the same as using the uh, exponential function uh, the uh, notation so this is the A. For B, is is not that straightforward. And first, we need to pay attention to this is in sine uh, function, right? So we need to first convert that to cosine function. Uh, so let me write here B. The first we need to uh, convert that using this trig identity here. Let me put a box around it. The v x v t is equal to fifty times the cosine hundred t minus ninety degrees. Right. So let's see. Treat this as x. So this is cosine x minus ninety degrees. Then we can find the phasor for this one is going to be equal to fifty times e two uh, minus j ninety degrees. Right. If you uh, if you use the Euler identity, this is actually is equal uh, negative 50 J, right? Because this one here is equal cosine 90 degrees plus J sine negative 90 degrees. So this one is zero and this one is negative one. So we get negative j for this part so we get negative 50 j right so that's the you can keep either this form or this form we put a units there this is the volts in terms of the volts and either of this this uh, form either this one or this one would be fine and then we have the third one the third one actually have um have a two right so have two functions so the first one the third one c we have a cosine function but also we have a sine function so we need to change that sine function to cosine function then we take the phase angle so we have 10 times cosine a uh, thousand t and plus 20 times cosine thousand t minus 90 degrees right so we first let me put a line here, and in this case, uh, the the current phasor 
would be taking the magnitude of the phase angle, the first one, which is 10 to e to j zero degrees, right? Which is this actually is equal to one, and plus 20 times e to minus j 90 degrees, right? So in this case, this equal we already did that. This is equal negative j. So therefore, we would have equal 10 minus j20 or 20j either way will be fine 20j the unit is so this is the uh, the answer and and the um the transformation from sinusoidal to phasor is quite straightforward just make sure the sinusoidal signal is in cosine form right if not if it's in sine form then we need to change it and then the other one is we need to we go from the phasor to sinusoidal. In this case, we need to add this frequency information because the sinusoidal needs that this, uh, frequency information, right? So if you the frequency information, make sure you use the make sure you have the omega on there. Omega is angular frequency. If you have in reading in reading per second. And if you have uh, the uh, the frequency f in hertz, and you need to do that transformation, which is two pi times f. Right. So omega and the uh, in the radian per second angular frequency and the frequencies we will have different um, uh, will have this transformation there. Um, let's look at a few examples here. In this case, let's see we have the um, phase angle. We have um, we have the um, phasor. So in this case, we just take the we take the magnitude of the phasor as amplitude of the sinusoidal. So in this the first one, Vt is going to be equal to 170. We take the magnitude and we take the uh, frequency, which is times the cosine. Omega t. Omega is in this case we have f here. Omega is two pi times f, right? Two pi times f. So the omega is two pi times f, which is, um, I mean, approximately equal three hundred seventy-seven reading per second. This is the very typical. Uh, this is the 60 hertz is the frequency of the power grid in the United States and so many other countries as well. And so this is the very commonly used angular frequency. And so in this case, I have 377T and the phase angle is 30 degrees, right? So that's the, that's the, um, the voltage uh, in the, uh, in time domain. And let's look at the second one here. And the second one here is, so we have, um, we would like to have this phasor in polar form, right? So if it's in polar form, we we'll just take the magnitude as the amplitude of the sinusoidal and then take the phase angle. So let's see if we can get this into the polar form. So uh, this has the, so the V is equal to 10, uh, 10, this one is, the first one is 10 times, um, actually e to j, uh, 90 degrees, that's a j, right? So that's 10 times the cosine 90 degrees plus a j sine 90 degrees. And so this, this just, this is zero. So this is a j. And plus a 60 minus a j 10, and we actually have 10 j minus plus a 60 minus a j 10. So these two will be canceled. Therefore, the phasor, the sinusoidal signal Vt is equal 60 times cosine. The um, frequency is 10,000 reading per second and the phase angle is zero we don't need to write it and the third one here see 
we have three uh, phasor components. So we have I is equal 10 plus J10 uh, plus 20 times cosine 180 degrees plus J sine 180 degrees. And this is 0, this is negative 1. So we have 10 plus J10 minus 20 is equal to negative 10 plus J10. And in polar form, this is going to be equal to uh, 10 times square root 2. And the face angle here would be 135 degrees. Right. So if you're getting rusty how to confirm polar form and to the rectangular form, um, then you need to go back to get that um, um, polished. Okay. And now we can go to the uh, sinusoidal in terms of this is the IT. Uh, this IT is going to be equal to the magnitude, which the amplitude is 10 square root 2 times cosine. What the, the frequency in this case is the frequency is uh, 400 hertz, uh, which is a typical frequency using the uh, um, aerospace industry and with that's the 800 pi t and the face angle is 135 degrees uh, in the unit apps so that concludes the example